Welcome. Tonight we are on the edge of Bethlehem. Tonight's theme, love. Christmas Eve service Sunday fall in Pat's Broncos at 11 o'clock, reading of the night before Christmas. Christmas Day service Monday the 25th at 7 o'clock, and we will begin in five minutes. Inside two minutes. Ninety seconds. One minute.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And away we go. Tonight's nice frill is sleeping at a night. All right, thank you. Very pretty. Advent week four, love, 12, 22, 23. 
7 p.m. Lebanon, Connecticut. And good evening once again, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon. So obviously we have tonight's service, which is now love. Christmas Eve will be at 11 o'clock. Monday the 25th, Christmas Day. And then next Friday, 7 o'clock, as we wrap up 2023. And then, of course, those are as follows. And, of course, that all of that is subject to change. So receive the call to worship. Light the lamps, prepare the room. God is coming to us. Make our hearts and spirits ready to receive God's most gracious gift, God's Son, Jesus Christ. Push the darkness away. The light is truly coming. May God's light shine on us, on us, in us, and through us, that God's glory may be seen. Amen. And you please rise and say with me, number 568, may the mind of Christ my Savior. And I gotta get my head. Again, like last week, all this is just acapella. So five sixty eight. May the mind of Christ my Savior live in me from day to day. By his love and power controlling all I do and say. May the word of God dwell richly in my heart from hour to hour, so that all may see I triumph only through his power. May the peace of God, my Father, rule my life in everything, that I may become to comfort sick and sorrowing. May the love of Jesus fill me as the waters fill the sea. Him exalt in self abasing. This is victory. May I run the race before me, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only on to Jesus as I onward go. May his beauty rest upon me as I seek the lost to win. And may they forget the channel, seeing only him. Lord, tonight, three days to your birth, we can remember the love you have for each one of us. From the youngest to the oldest, it is an opportunity to come back together with those we want to be with and share in this beautiful time of year. So come, Emmanuel, and shine your light on us this night and every night. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. O come, Emmanuel, 245.
O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come now, day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to fly. Rejoice, rejoice, even you well shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, by all peoples in one heart and mind, bid and be strife and quarrel cease, fill the whole world with heaven's peace, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Well, oh, I know what to do. Hold on. But so on this table is the four candles so far. Hope, peace, joy, and love. All four candles have had meaning to each and every one of us at this time of year. And the fourth candle is a symbol of love. 
The love of Christ is powerful, and the love we have for each other is what makes Christmas special. Christmas is a great time to bring two people back together and into the new year, hitting the reset button. Through the gift of Jesus, he can bring everybody back together as we are one body, one faith, one Baptist. Let's pray. Lord, tonight, by your spirit and in your word, we look at these four candles in our journey that has led us to this place. Tonight, you are with each and every one of us as we get ready to celebrate that special day. The day you were born. And through it all, we can bring each other back together. Find in hope, peace, joy, and love as we have looked for all four of these in these last four weeks. So now by your spirit, be with us as we ever get so closer to your birth. Amen. Anthem is Let There Be Christmas. Very pretty. Thank you, Joseph Martin. Very, very pretty.
All right, so our offertory tonight is Advent Trilogy. Man, it, it puts all of these ideas together in one anthem print, incorporating an Austrian hymn, a raise it square, and and four. Now, I think next year when we have these services, I'm going to have somebody light the candles for me because this is because this is dangerous to do on your own. Anyway, so as always, I invite you to subscribe and continue to check out some of these other videos we've been working on as well. Tomorrow, NFL doubleheader, meaning another Madden simulation, and Sunday night before this, before we come back, and I read the night before Christmas, you will see a simulation of the Patriots and Broncos. Patriots just trying to end the year on a positive note. But in the meantime, will the ushers please come forward as we receive the evening's gifts and offering? So, Advent Trilogy. Without end. 
جانت آمین Lord, it is true and to it that in just three days time we'll be saying enjoy the world that you have come as you are the line of William Messiah to take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world as we continue our walk during this break and hopefully our walk back to spend the holidays with the one we want to be with. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so the reading tonight is a very common one that we read during this service, and it's Luke 1, 20 sets to 38, and then 40 sets to 55. And we're going to talk about breaking bad habits and finding love again at Christmas. Remember, love is not just physical love, but emotionally as well. So, Luke 1, 20 sets to 38, and then 40 sets to 55. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin that engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon Aaron, Gabriel greeted her, Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind her greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, But how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth could see the son as old as she is? Everyone called her barren. And here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. And now jumping down to 40 cents to 55. And Mary said, I'm bursting. Wait a second. We read this last week. All right. So I guess it's 20 cents to 38. So, breaking bad habits. This is, again, something that can be worked out this time of year. Finding love again at Christmas. And so, what I did was, I added a few extra slides to this presentation. And I give examples of bad habits and the inability to say no. So we will look at that now. All right. So examples of bad habits are biting your fingernails like this. Going to bed multiple times a day, especially when feeling sad, lonesome, etc. Now, I'm going to pause right there because I want to look at that one. Because that can happen to the best of us. And, even, and it happens to every one of us every now and then. Because in our minds... We think that we are not good enough. We think that nobody will want to spend time with us. That 
here we are at home, nobody to go do anything with. You know, that happens a lot. The reason why we do that is because it's a place where we feel safe. We re That's when we make a choice to, to be like, you know what? I'm going to go just hide in my room, and then I don't have to deal with anything. Um, think about it. Does that really help the situation? No. No, it just makes the situation worse. And then you end up crying. And then you want, then you, then you realize, and then you're left wondering, what are you crying about? Because don't we all want to be with somebody that, you know, would want to spend time with us? What do we want somebody to call us up and say, hey, do you want to do this? Or, hey, do you want to go see the Wonka movie? Or whatever the case may be. Or this message was in the summertime, I would say, hey, do you want to go to Fenway? Or, you know, go down to Doug. But since we are in December, we're just using the movie theater example. Anyway, this happens a lot with people on the spectrum. Because they don't, because in their minds, they, they really, it's like a puzzle to them. It's like a puzzle in their brains to figure out exactly why something is happening. Now, I've had this experience. It's like, I know why it happened. But we got to learn that if they want to be with us, they will call us. And if they really want to make the effort of coming back in, they will call. You can't force somebody to spend time with you. You can't. So what do we do in this situation? Well, you go out and you make your own fun. Because going, just going and go, just going in and just shutting the door and being like, you know what? I don't want, I being like, you know what? I don't want to deal with anything. That is not the answer. Other examples here are spending money the wrong way. So, of course, sometimes we like to treat our, as human beings, you know, we like to treat ourselves, you know, we like to spoil ourselves from time to time, but there's a limit to that. Think about last month. A situation that could have been avoided. If we want to go to yoga, get a massage, Reiki, or whatever, that is fine. But we have to be careful of what the price tag is for it. And we have to think. We have to look at it and be like, you know what? If I do this, this is what the result is going to be. Whereas, if I don't do this, then I will be able to do things, do other things that I want to do. It's about controlling our impulses, that impulsive spending that I think some people have. Blaming others for your own problems. That is pretty self-explanatory. Eating poorly. And failing to say no. See not slow.
So the inability to say no leads into the place of people having this notion that everything is yes, low assertion, treated like a doormat. I have seen this so often that when you finally tell them off, people will kick off, cuss you out, not talk to you, and that's surprised that you stood up for yourself. So really, this is this is what this is. We have to be able to know when to say no. Okay, because it's about learning how to be assertive, but not aggressive. And then how do we break bad habits, identify triggers, do something else, replace it with something, keep it simple, think long term, and persist. So if we know that there's a trigger that gets us into these bad habits, we got, we got to go do something else. Replace it with something else. And keep it simple. Think long term. And persist. All right. So basically what I'm saying here is that we all have bad habits that we that we all have. And as you can tell that from the list that I just showed you, those are just several examples of some of those things. Now the next question is what about if you want to be with somebody, how do you approach that situation? How do you tell them that you love them and that you want to be with them over the holidays? And just tell them that you care about them, that you want to be with them. Because Christmas is about making things right. Making a difference. Show them that you have done the things that you said you would do. Keep doing the things you've been doing. This is what Mary is telling us. I will read 46 to 55, but I'll only read a few select verses because I don't like to repeat the same readings. And Mary said, I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showered his strength, scattering the bluff and braggarts. He not tyrants off the ho their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. So if you think about this, this is what this is kind of exactly what I've been talking about throughout this whole season of Advent. It's about telling somebody that you want to be with them and you want to be able to enjoy each other's company again. You don't want to fall back into the place of being like, oh my God, what did I do this time? And so on and so forth. Because that doesn't work. That does not work. If you want to show somebody that you love them and you want to be with them and you care about them, then do something nice for them. 
whatever it might be. Maybe take them to dinner. Maybe, you know, to do something nice for them. Show them Show them who you, who you are. Because in this Christmas season, it's about resolving differences. Resolving differences. Putting our egos and just everything in our minds to rest. Putting it to rest. Because... In this special time of year, this is a time to be together. It's not about materialistic things. It's not about the giving. It's about receiving. And the best gift that you can give somebody is yourself. I actually consider this a gift. Think about it. Two years ago, think about it. Two years ago, I wasn't planning on doing worship services. I didn't. I. Uh, it just so happened that when we were under lock and key, it just so happened that I just started doing these and have continued to do them because this is about telling a story. This is showing the love of Christ in each and every one of us. This is about how to be better people. Because I know it ain't easy. I know it's not easy out there. And I know, and I know sometimes in today's world, it can, it's like, who do you trust? Who do you not trust? And that's a big thing here, especially in the world that we live in. Because if we can show somebody that we can be trusted, we show somebody that they have nothing to worry about, then that is a good sign. Especially if they kind of figure out what the routine is. Or if they figure out patterns of behavior. And also figure out patterns of routine. The other part of this is fine. It, that really leads into the second part of this message. Finding love again at Christmas. I really just, I, I've just said, you know, if you want to be with somebody and you know in your hearts that you want to be with them, then go be with them. Go be with them. It may be a little bit awkward at first, considering you haven't been in each other's presence for a while. But allow them back in. Allow them back in. Put a hand up and send. I love you, saying I want to be with you. Now, there was a question that came up. Somebody posed the question of, is the cross relevant at Christmas? Huh, that's an interesting question. Believe it or not, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, because it's a symbol of love. It's a symbol of what Jesus did for us in his later years, giving us the sacrifice of his love that never ends, and that eternal love that lives on. Because remember, as I told you a few weeks ago, after all of this, the cross begins to form. It forms because that is what comes next. 
because after Advent, we go through the Christmas season, Epiphany, and then we are almost into Lent again. So, obviously, dates and times for that for those shirts will be announced down the road. But what I'm saying here, guys, is show somebody that you love them. And remember, the best gift that you can give somebody is yourself. Give them your time. This is what makes this holiday so beautiful. Even though the Grinch didn't think it was beautiful over those years, he later figured out that yes, it was. Because Mary is telling us that She's ready for what the Lord has in store for her. She was ready to give birth to a son. In fact, in Isaiah 7:14, he said, The virgin will conceive, and we will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And God is with us. Every day. And every night. So, in this Christmas season, guys, break the bad habits and just be with people that you love and remember his love for us never changes and it never ends. And that is tonight's message. Amen. First song is, Oh, How He Loves You and Me. Oh, how He loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life, what more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary did go, his love for sinners to show, what he did there brought hope from despair, oh how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Lord, tonight, by your spirit and in your word, you have guided us to the edge of the city, to the edge of Bethlehem. We know that the love you have for us is special, it's unique. From the youngest of us to the oldest of us, we know the love that you have for each and every one of us. And like Mary, we were preparing for the what's to come. And we know what comes after. And it's in these moments where we can just sit back and think about who we have in our lives 
and of the wonderful things to come. And so for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so it's to this end, in this Christmas season, we're keeping the Christ in Christmas. As it is in that prayer that you taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Closing him is the first Noel. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to serve him for shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay key in their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no well no well no well no well born is the king of israel They looked at sun and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far. And to the earth it gave great light. And so it continued both day and night. No well, no well. Noel, Noel, born is the king of Israel. Carry the light of that same star. Three wise men came from country far. To seek for a king was their intent, and to follow the star wherever it went. No well, no well, no well, no well. Born is the king of Israel. This star drew nigh to the northwest, over Bethlehem it took its rest. And here it did full stop and stay, right over the place where Jesus lay. No well, no well, no. Noel, Noel, born is the king of Israel. And turned in those wise men three, full reverently lean upon the knee, and all. In his nets, their gold and myrrh and frankincense. No well, 
no Then let us all with one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord. And how I may and earth have not and with his blood mankind has bought. No well, no well. Israel. Receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you find love, peace, hope, and joy as we are ever so close to Christmas. And I will see you Sunday night at 11 o'clock. Amen.
And like I said, Sunday at 11, Lessons and Carols.